Okay, so today we're um, diving into the world of free streaming. Okay. Specifically Tubi TV. Right. You've probably heard of it. Yeah. Maybe even watched it. Like, mm. It's completely free. But right. have you ever wondered how it makes money? Yeah, that's the question a lot of people have, right? Right. Because when you think about it, mm -hmm. all these other streaming services, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, mm -hmm. they're all asking for that monthly fee. Exactly. Um, and Tubi seems to have found a way around that. Yeah. And the way they do that is advertising. Okay, so they're not just like throwing random ads up and hoping that somebody watching clicks on them? No, not at all. Okay. And I think if you think back to the very early days of streaming services, mm -hmm. you would get these just like, generic ads yeah like totally irrelevant completely irrelevant it was right. like who even like who are these for yeah yeah and tubi's really using uh something called programmatic advertising okay programmatic advertising yeah that sounds a little intimidating i know it sounds really fancy but it's actually very simple okay so basically tubi uses algorithms to make sure that the right ads are being shown to the right viewers okay at the right time so it's personalized yes exactly okay. Like you get those recommendations yeah. for shows that you might like. Mm -hmm. It's doing the same thing, but for ads. Okay, so instead of getting an ad for like, I don't know, gardening tools when I'm watching a true crime documentary. Exactly. It's going to give me an ad for like a home security system. Yeah, something a little bit more in line with what you're interested in. Okay. So it's analyzing your viewing patterns yeah. and who you are to tailor those ad breaks. To make it more relevant to me. Exactly. So I'm not like immediately trying to skip it. Right. And from an advertiser's point of view, okay. this is really good for them. Okay. Because it means that they're getting their message mm -hmm. in front of an audience that's more likely to actually want to buy their product. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But ads are just one piece of the puzzle, right? Yeah, definitely. Our research showed that Tubi has a few other things that they're doing to bring in some money. Yeah. So they're doing advertising, which is their main source of revenue. Right. But they're also experimenting with things like sponsored content. Okay. And licensing agreements. So we might be seeing like a mini series. Yeah. That's completely sponsored by a brand. Right. Right. So it's like a win win for everybody. Right. The brand gets their product in front of viewers. Right. And Tubi gets to have this new content. Okay. And what about licensing? Right. So for licensing. Are they doing anything different than like their competitors? Yeah, so they're not necessarily going after those like really new releases okay. that everyone and their mother is trying to get the rights to. Right. They've really carved out this niche for themselves mm -hmm. where they're getting movies and TV shows that might not be brand new, right? but people still love them. So kind of like the classics. Exactly, yeah, like cult classics. Okay. Like hidden gems. So they're like this huge library exactly. of content that spans all these different genres. Yeah, and that way they're able to get them at a much lower price. Okay. Because there's not as much competition. All right. So it's really smart. Okay. And it's working for them. And it's working. They have how many users, did you say? Yeah, they have 74 million monthly active users. Wow. As of June 2023. And Fox saw that and was like, we need to buy this. Yeah, they bought them in 2020. For how much? $440 million. Wow. So clearly Fox saw the potential oh, wow. for this business model. For sure. Um, okay, so we've talked about this business model. Yeah. But I think it would be helpful to like really break it down. Yeah. Our source had this business model canvas. Okay. That I think would be really helpful to go through. All right. Um, so the first thing is their value proposition. Right. So like what's in it for me yes, as I, the viewer? Exactly. And there's two sides to that. Okay, so there's what's in it for me as the viewer, but then also what's in it for like the companies that are paying for the ads. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So for the viewer, mm -hmm. the value is pretty straightforward. Yeah. It's free entertainment. Yeah, free movies and TV shows, who doesn't want that? Exactly, and you don't have to pay yeah. anything. Yeah, another monthly subscription. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, and then what about for the advertisers though? Right, so for advertisers, yeah. Tubi offers them something that's really valuable. Okay. Um, and that is a really big audience. Those 74 million active users. Exactly. Right. And these are people who are engaged, okay. who are watching the platform. Okay. So if you're a brand yeah. and you want to get your message out, mm -hmm. this is a really good way to do it. Okay. So it's a win-win. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Everybody wins. Okay. The viewers get the content for free. Right. And the advertisers get to reach their target market. Perfect. But how are people watching this? Right. Is it just on, like, my computer? So that's another thing that Tubi does really well. Okay. Is that they've made sure that their platform is available across a lot of different channels. Like my phone. 
Yeah, so your phone. Smart TV. Um, smart TVs, gaming consoles. Okay, so like pretty much any device that I want to watch something on, I could probably watch it. Exactly. They're pretty much everywhere. Okay. Um, so you can watch it wherever you are. Okay, makes sense. Um, so we've talked about the content that yeah. they have available, the fact that it's on all these different platforms, mm. um, but it's not enough to just have a bunch of content yeah. and just have it available everywhere. Exactly. You need to keep people engaged. Yeah. So what are they doing? So Tubi really understands that the viewing experience needs to be good. Okay. And for that, they need to personalize it. So I'm not scrolling for like an hour trying to find something to watch. Exactly. They don't want you to get decision fatigue. Right. Um, so they're using those algorithms again. Okay. That we talked about earlier. The ones for the ads. Yeah. So the same algorithms that are choosing which ads to show you. Okay. Are also being used to power their recommendations. So it's like they're getting to know me. Yeah, exactly. Based on what I watch. They're analyzing what you watch, <laughs> what you've watched in the past. So it's like having a little mini me in Tubi headquarters who's choosing my shows. Yeah, basically. Okay. That's cool. I like that. Uh, um, okay. So we talked about the value proposition. Yes. Um, their channels, how they get to be in front of people. Yeah. And then the customer relationships. Mm -hmm. um, so let's do a SWOT analysis. Right. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Okay. So starting with strengths. What are Tubi's biggest strengths? Well, I think we've touched on a few of them already. Okay. Um, but their content library is really strong. Okay. They have a lot of different movies and TV shows. Right. So they really have that variety that people want. Okay. Um, and then their interface is really user friendly. Okay. Um, it's clean, it's intuitive. Okay. And it's easy to use. You don't have to be like a tech person to figure it out. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Right. And then of course they have that cross platform compatibility right. on all those different devices. Yeah. So it makes it easy to watch. Exactly. Yeah. Um okay, so those are all really good strengths. Yeah. What about some weaknesses? Right. So no business model is perfect. Of course not. Um, and so one of the weaknesses that Tubi has is that they rely so heavily on advertising. Okay. Um, and while that's good in a lot of ways. Right. It makes money. It makes the money. Um, it can be a little bit of a double-edged sword. So are you saying that people are going to get annoyed by all the ads? Yes, yeah, yeah. especially if they're used to those ad-free experiences. Yeah, like on Netflix or Hulu. Exactly. Okay. So Tubi really needs to strike a balance there. So they need to figure out how many ads can we put in. Yeah. Where it's not going to like totally detract from the experience. Exactly. But yeah. it's also going to make them money. Yeah. It's a fine line. Okay. What other weaknesses are there? <laughs> yeah. It's a tough act to balance. Yeah. Um, so we talked about the ads being a weakness. Right. Are there any other areas where Tubi like falls a little short? Um. Yeah, I think one area where they could improve is original content. Okay, so like their own shows and movies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because right now they're mostly focused on licensing right. content that's already been made. Which makes sense. Yeah, it's cheaper. Yeah, and it's a good strategy for them. Mm -hmm. But if they really want to compete... With like the Netflixes and the HBOs. Exactly. Yeah. They're going to have to start making their own stuff. Okay. Um, because that's what people are really paying for. That's what I hear. Yeah. Um. Okay, so weaknesses. Right. Original content. Yeah, I mean, they're trying. They've done a few mm. co-productions, yeah. um, and they've even had a couple of exclusive releases. So they're, like, dipping their toes in the water. Exactly. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. It's a start. It's a good sign. Um, okay, so we've done strengths, weaknesses. Right. What about some opportunities? Right, so opportunities. Where can 2B go from here? Well, one thought is. Yeah. They could always introduce a premium option. Okay. So in addition to their free service, mm. they could offer an ad-free Subscription. Okay. So for people who really hate ads, right. they could pay a monthly fee. Like we do for everything else. Exactly. Then they wouldn't have to watch them. Exactly. And it would give Tubi another revenue stream. Oh, that's a good point. Right. So yeah. they're not just reliant on the advertisers. Exactly. Okay. I like it. What else? Um, Another big opportunity for them is international expansion. Okay. So like going global. Exactly. Um, have they not done that yet or? They have. They're in a few countries. Oh, okay. Um, but there's a lot more out there. So a lot more room to grow. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, so they could really tap into those markets. Okay. Um, where streaming is just starting to become popular. Okay. I like it. All right. Um, 
so we've done strengths, weaknesses, opportunities. Right. Let's wrap up with some threats. Right. Threats. What are the things that are keeping Tubi's executives up at night? Well, the biggest one is probably competition. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Right, because they're not just competing with each other with other free services. Right. They're also competing with those paid services. And Netflix and Hulu and all of them. Right. Um, so the streaming market is really crowded right now. Yeah, it's kind of overwhelming as a consumer. Are there any other threats? Yeah, another big one is consumer tastes. Okay. Because what's popular today might not be popular tomorrow. Right. Um, so Tubi really needs to stay on top of those trends. Okay. And they need to be able to adapt quickly. Okay, so they need to kind of like predict the future. Sort of, yeah. They need to be able to see what's coming next. Okay. Um, and then, of course, there's always piracy. Okay. Yeah. Which is a problem for... For every streaming service. Every streaming service. Okay. Um, so Tubi is not immune to that. Okay. Um, and then finally, there are the regulatory hurdles. Okay. okay. Um, as Tubi expands internationally, yeah. they're going to have to deal with... Different, law different laws, different regulations. Okay. Um, so that's something else that they need to be prepared for. Okay, so we've covered a lot today. We have. We've talked about yeah. 2B's different revenue streams, mm -hmm. how their business model works, yeah. their strengths, their weaknesses, their opportunities, their threats. It's a lot to think about. It really is. Yeah. Um, so what's the takeaway here? Well, I think 2B is a really interesting case study. Okay. Because it shows that there's more than one way to be successful in the streaming world. So you don't have to charge monthly fee. Exactly. Okay. You can be successful with an ad-supported model. Um, and I think it also says something about consumers. Yeah. Um, we're used to paying for streaming services. Right. But maybe we're getting a little tired of it. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely subscription fatigue. Right. Um, and so Tubi is giving people an alternative. Free content. Yeah. Who doesn't love that? Exactly. <laughs> um, okay. So Tubi sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to check it out. You should. I think you'd really like it. Um, well, that's it for today's deep dive. Okay. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for having me. And we'll see you next time.